Have you ever looked at another teacher's question and thought, that's not a bad question, but I could have made it better? Of course you have. We all think that. <laughs> So let's talk about how you might take someone else's question and alter it to make it better so that it fits the way you like to teach. I'm going to make a new assignment here. Let's go down to the question browser so that I can look at the question that I'm interested in. Um, let's pick something related to the normal distribution. And I'm going to scroll down here to the thermocoupler question because this is an easy one to illustrate. If I click on view, That'll show me the question the way it looks, and right here is the code used to make the question. There are three different sections of code. There's question, which you can see right here, there's answer, and there's a third one called solution, which this particular question doesn't actually have that section, but it pops up if the students want later to go back and look at questions and see how they were supposed to work it out. Of course, do keep in mind copyright laws. If you're going to use most of what somebody else wrote, then this book would need to be something that my students need to purchase. So let's say I'm ready to simply alter some little piece of this. So I'm going to copy that piece of the question. And then back here in WebAssign, I'm going to create myself a new question. And here in the question piece, there goes that bit of code right there. If I go back to the code, I wanna grab the answer piece and then put the answer piece down in this box. And here's where you would put solution parts if that had also been a part of it. Now, if I go test preview, I can see whether it's working. In this particular case, it's not yet because it's treating this like multiple choice when it was supposed to be numerical. So I need to go back here and change it from multiple choice to be numerical. Some questions might have multiple and you can click here and we'll talk more about that in just a second. I'm going to call this fixed divorce. This was exercise um, 042. And let's test it now. And it looks like it's working. Okay, beautiful. So all we've done so far is clone the question. What things might I want to change? Well, maybe I want to change the name instead of a thermocoupler. I'm going to call it a patient because I'm teaching medical students and that will change the wording. Another important thing is to note the rounding tolerance here. Students have to be within, right here, 0 .00006 of the correct answer. Well, I can play with this number to increase it. Now they only need to be within 0 .001 if I'm having issues on my assignment with the tolerances for rounding errors. Maybe you're interested in changing the numbers. With a little bit of work, you can get used to how do you read this. This right here is a bit of code that says it's going to randomly create a number between 1 and 9 with one decimal. It then divides that by 10, so this is between 0.1 and 0.9. Well, maybe I want it to be between uh, 10 and 90, so I'm not going to divide by 10 anymore. What does this do? Well, it changes that standard deviation that we were looking at. Before they were small numbers like 0.4, now we're looking at 48. So there's a lot of options here. How do you find out how to read this kind of code and handle it? Well, try this. Do a search for an assignment and put in the assignment ID 13178698. I specially made this to have a whole bunch of questions with some increasing complexity. So if we look at this assignment here, it starts off with just an easy fill in the blank, some easy multiple choice and numerical answers. If we go down just a little bit, you'll even see these multi-mode options that I was talking about. This one's numerical, but that one is multiple choice. So how do you do that? You can go through this, you can play with it. And on all of these questions, if you go back through, you can find the question you're interested in, click edit, and that will show you the code, what it looks like so that you can try to copy that or imitate it. But another important option is to reach out. Cengage has teams of people ready to help you make your questions the way you want them. And there's also faculty partner people like me. And if you said, hey, I, I'm trying to design something that's a little different and I don't know how to do it. And then we'd all get excited like, oh, I'll bet I can figure that out. And in the end, if you can imagine what you want your homework to look like, there's a way to make it happen because no one is going to design questions better for your class than you will.